Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week's tale begins with a young girl by the name of Kate Bishop. She was the daughter of a rich publishing magnate, Derek Bishop. While Kate would spend most of her adolescent years at boarding school, her father never made much time for her even while she was home. Early in her life, her mother Eleanor was more present and attentive, although as the years rolled on, Eleanor was around less and less, spending more time on vacation and away from Derek. Furthermore, Kate got a look at who her father truly was one night when she descended from her bedroom and witnessed him savagely beating a man who was tied to a chair. Wanting to investigate further, the next morning Kate followed her father as he went about his business, and saw him dealing with a known supervillain, the Matador. After Derek left, Kate tried to slip away but was found and captured by one of the villain's goons. The Matador intended to hold the girl hostage and ransom her back to her father. However, Kate fought back and attempted to escape herself. She was nearly caught again, but at the last moment, Kate Bishop was rescued by the avenging archer Clint Burton, better known as Hawkeye. The other Avengers soon arrived to make sure she was okay, but Kate was far more impressed by her initial savior. Burton wasn't a god or a super soldier or an Iron Man. He was just a guy with a bow and arrow and an attitude, and that was something that Kate Bishop could respect. As she grew up, Kate took up archery herself and trained hard, becoming extremely adept. Like her mother, she also pursued charity work, donating much of her time and money to causes she considered worthy, such as women's shelters and soup kitchens. She became even more heavily involved after she was told that her mother was killed during a trip to Boulder, Colorado. As a young woman, Kate was subjected to a harrowing experience when she was assaulted while walking alone in Central Park. She was traumatized, but she survived and sought professional therapy. After that, she trained even more intensely, mastering several forms of combat and self-defense. Meanwhile, the Avengers experienced one of their darkest days when Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, was driven mad with the grief of losing her twin children and turned against her friends and allies. With her reality-altering powers, she launched several attacks on Avengers Mansion, one in the form of an invasion from the alien race known as the Kree. That particular battle was ended when Clint Burton, the original Hawkeye, sacrificed his life crashing into the lead ship and destroying it. Soon after, Maximoff was exposed as the true cause of the invasion. She was knocked out by Doctor Strange and turned over to her alleged father, Magneto. For a time after this, the Avengers were officially disbanded, during which a boy calling himself Iron Lad came back in time from the 31st century. Iron Lad was, in fact, the younger version of the time-traveling supervillain Kang the Conqueror. After meeting his future self, Iron Lad escaped into the past, not wishing to become the terrible villain he was destined to be. However, he knew that Kang would come after him. He tried to turn to the Avengers for help, but found their headquarters abandoned. And so, based on information left behind by the Vision, he assembled a group of novice heroes to fight Kang when he arrived. There was Eli Bradley, aka Patriot, the grandson of Isaiah Bradley, the Black Captain America, Teddy Altman, Hulkling, the hybrid son of the original Kree, Captain Marvel, and a Skrull Princess, and Billy Kaplan, originally called Asgardian but better known as Wiccan, the reincarnation of one of Wanda Maximoff's twin children. This new team of novice heroes soon garnered media attention as the headlines dubbed them the Young Avengers. Meanwhile, Kate Bishop was attending her sister's wedding when the ceremony was interrupted by armed gunmen who held the guests hostage. However, the Young Avengers arrived on the scene to rescue them. In the ensuing battle, the criminal leader attempted to hold Kate hostage at gunpoint. However, Bishop would not be a victim again and fought back, aiding the Young Avengers. After the fight, the novice heroes flew off while Kate was begrudgingly taken to the hospital by her father. She waited outside while Derek Bishop yelled at the hospital staff, but she was soon approached by another teenage girl. Cassie Lang, the daughter of Scott Lang, the second Ant-Man, another Avenger who had lost his life in the Scarlet Witch's attack. Cassie was looking for the young Avengers, wishing to join their ranks and be a hero like her father. With Kate's help, she tracked them to the remains of Avengers Mansion. 
However, the girls weren't the only ones to find them, and inside, Iron Lad spoke with senior Avengers, Iron Man and Captain America, who found them with the help of the super-powered private investigator Jessica Jones. However, their attention was drawn outside when Cassie inadvertently demonstrated that she had inherited her father's size-changing abilities. After regaining her regular size, she replaced her tattered clothes with one of her father's old uniforms from inside the mansion. But the group was then attacked by the Growing Men, androids under the control of Kang the Conqueror. The Growing Men were searching for Iron Lad, and upon confirming his location, they left to retrieve their master. Before Kang arrived, Captain America claimed that the Young Avengers would need training, directing Cassie and the four boys into a room for just that. However, this was merely a ruse, and Iron Man locked the chamber door behind the teenagers. Kang soon arrived and confronted the older heroes, searching for his younger self. Meanwhile, Kate Bishop, having watched Iron Man key in the access code, freed the Young Avengers from their cell. She then scavenged what she could from the mansion and outfitted herself with weapons and equipment belonging to Hawkeye, Mockingbird, and the Swordsman. And so the Young Avengers assembled and battled Kang the Conqueror. While they were ultimately victorious, Iron Lad was forced to accept that if he remained, it would cause irreparable damage to the time stream. He left behind his armor, which became a new version of the synthesoid The Vision, based on Iron Lad's brain patterns and the operating system of the original Vision. He then returned to the 31st century, where he would forget his time as a young Avenger and eventually become Kang. The day was won, but Captain America still insisted that the Young Avengers turn over their weapons and equipment. However, Kate would not give up so easily. With her wealth and connections, she provided herself and her new friends with costumes and gear, and together they continued fighting as the Young Avengers. They eventually fought alongside their older counterparts in repelling both the Kree and Skrulls, who were after Hulkling because of his heritage. When the battle was over, Kate spoke again to Captain America, telling him in no uncertain terms that they weren't going to stop. Her attitude reminded him of another Avenger, and so he later sent Kate Bishop a gift, a bow and a quiver of arrows that had previously belonged to the only other person to stand up to him like she had, and a card with two words inscribed upon it, For Hawkeye. And so Kate Bishop took over her old hero's identity and continued to battle injustice as one of the young Avengers. But this wasn't the end for Clint Barton. It was also around this time that the Scarlet Witch was manipulated into restructuring reality so that mutant kind were the dominant species on Earth. In this new reality, the world of M, one of the many differences was that Clint Burton, Hawkeye, was still alive. However, some of the Earth's heroes regained the memories of their previous lives and fought to restore them. The world was ultimately returned to its previous state, and while Burton was resurrected in the process, he abandoned his Hawkeye identity and went into hiding, overwhelmed by his death and rebirth. After that came the passing of the Superhuman Registration Act and the Superhero Civil War. Overnight, heroes who refused to register with the government were considered fugitives to be hunted down and arrested by Iron Man and other government-sanctioned superheroes. And to make matters worse, Captain America was seemingly assassinated and thought to be dead. In the fallout of this, Barton confronted Iron Man, demanding to know what he would do about it. Seeking to make things right, Iron Man offered Clint the role of Captain America. He tentatively accepted, but his first mission in the mask was to apprehend the unregistered heroes Patriot and Hawkeye. Not realizing she was talking to her predecessor, Kate Bishop explained that she took the name Hawkeye to honor Barton's legacy, and that it was the real Captain America who gave it to her. Moved by Bishop's words, and perhaps trusting the original Cap, Burton let the two young Avengers go free and gave up the shield. He instead took the costumed identity of Ronan, one previously used by Maya Lopez, better known as Echo, and joined an underground group of Avengers led by Luke Cage, who opposed the Superhuman Registration Act. 
He later dropped in on Kate Bishop during an awkward date with her teammate Patriot by disguising himself as a coachman. After briefly testing her in combat, Ronan invited Kate to meet him at the Avengers' temporary headquarters to see her archery. The following day, Kate traveled to the Manhattan apartment indicated on Ronan's note, and much to her surprise, inside was a very much alive Clint Burton. The two Hawkeyes compared their archery abilities, and it soon became clear that they were not only close in skill, but also had similarly brash attitudes. Clint gave Kate some life advice and also made a bet with her that if he could split an arrow with another arrow, she would return his bow to him. Kate accepted, thinking it was impossible, but much to her surprise, Clint made the shot successfully. Kate left the bow and went back to the young Avengers, frustrated and upset. But later, she and her teammate Speed returned to steal it back. Sneaking inside the apartment, Kate found a picture of Clint's early years when he himself was a relatively young Avenger. But when she heard Clint and Luke returning, she grabbed the bow and escaped. However, Kate stayed close to eavesdrop while Clint debated with Luke in favor of the young Avengers. Quickly deducing that Kate had been there, and likely still was, Clint argued that the world needed kids like Kate Bishop in it. Burton followed Bishop back to the Young Avengers headquarters to offer her some words of encouragement and a gift. The picture of the Avengers from his own early years. Eventually, the Superhuman Registration Act was repealed, the world entered a new heroic age, and Clint Burton went back to being known as Hawkeye. Kate Bishop continued to use the same code name, so there were officially two of them. For a time, the Young Avengers went their separate ways, during which Kate was Burton's partner in danger. It was during this time that she had her first encounter with the villainous Madame Mask, a woman who would later become a recurring nemesis for her. She also had a brief relationship with the Kree hero Novar, otherwise known as Marvel Boy. Kate Bishop also reunited with some of her old allies and befriended the interdimensional powerhouse America Chavez when a new group of young Avengers formed. Soon, Bishop had proven to be just as good, if not better, than Burton. Clint got into some trouble of his own, and after an argument between the two, Kate moved to the West Coast, taking with her his one-eyed dog, Lucky. Kate's relationship with her father had also become increasingly strained. Evidently, sometime before this, Kate's father remarried, although Kate's new stepmother was only a few years older than her. After her father cut off her credit cards, she made her first attempt at starting her own Hero for Hire business. However, she and Lucky soon returned to New York when she learned that Clint Burton was in need of rescuing. The full details of that adventure can be read in the Hawkeye series by Matt Fraction, David Aha, and others which ran for 22 issues from 2012 to 2015. After spending some more time fighting alongside her predecessor, Kate Bishop later returned to the West Coast. There she made new friends and allies, and properly started her business, Hawkeye Investigations. From there, Kate and Clint have also assembled the latest incarnation of the West Coast Avengers. For more of Kate's Californian adventures, you can read the Hawkeye series, which ran for 16 issues from 2017 to 2018, as well as the subsequent West Coast Avengers series, both of which were written by Kelly Thompson. We can perhaps go into more detail on those another day, but that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!